Horror and visual novels are a combination that I really like. After all, one of my favorite games of all time, The House in Fena Morgana, is really big on that genre. There's just something I like about spooky stories, so whenever I see a VN with that aspect, I typically want to look into it. Today, we're talking about a VN that is very much bite-sized horror, which may seem ironic when you see some of the stuff the game's plot does. Let's dive right into it. Here is my review of Silenced The House for the Nintendo Switch. In the house, you play as Ashley, part of a group of teenagers going to a spooky house in the middle of the woods as a sort of thrill-seeking adventure during one of their birthdays. This group is very typical of teenage horror. One of them is an unfaithful jerk that just wants to have sex with all the girls. One of the girls is a drama queen obsessed with her figure and wants to be the center of attention all the time. Really just the typical, these teenagers are definitely going to die tropes of the horror genre. Now what makes this story unique and not very tropey cliche horror is Ashley and the whole plot behind what is going on. From the get go, the story seems to hint that she has another motive for this trip to the house and a few things are shown even more so when they get to the house and attempt to speak to the dead with horrific results. Now the story overall, I'm a little mixed on. The beginning buildup with how the characters are with being sex obsessed, beauty queen stuff, I didn't care that much for. While I did find a lot of intrigue once Ashley began giving the reader hints on what was really going on, I really never connected with anyone in the game outside of her. And that's unfortunate because Ashley was a really interesting character. Her backstory, what was really going on in the house, her connection with all the craziness that happens later on, I really enjoyed her character, but then again, she was the only character that the game took time to develop. Everyone else just had a big lore dump right at the end. It also doesn't help that the game's English translation is a bit messy. You can understand what's being said, but there are words missing all over the place and very awkward wording to many pieces of dialogue. When it comes to gameplay, The House is a visual novel with light dialogue choices. As you trek through, you'll navigate story events and occasionally have a choice to direct the story in a direction, though it is a bit more simplified than other VNs. Now with main progression, we have the typical features, auto advance, skip text when you're doing a replay for different endings, manually saving your progress to a few different pages of slots, pretty much VN 101. These all work fine, though I do feel the auto advance settings are a bit sluggish. Even with the auto time set to the fastest option, I found myself awkwardly waiting for it to move on when I had already read that piece of narration two to three times or more. I ended up just abandoning the feature and navigating normally. Then we get to the dialogue choice system. This isn't like most VNs where a choice can steer the story in one direction or another. Every choice but one is there solely for getting endings. There is a set of choices that lets you finish the game, but every other option is there with a choice of this moves forward with the story and this one gives you an abrupt alternate ending, sometimes good and sometimes bad. There also aren't that many options here. You only get around four dialogue choices across the entire game. And there's a reason for that. This is an extremely short game, almost short enough that it's worth being called a demo. While it does tell a complete story, the game only lasts around 40 minutes before it's over. You get your setup, big event happens, and all the craziness of how everything escalates and resolves. Even if you go back and use the skip feature for all the different endings, you're not going to be spending more than about an hour on this game. And that brings me back to the story. I feel the other characters should have been far more fleshed out with more going on. Many of the main characters had their lore dropped abruptly right before their major event happened and then their part of the story is over. The game really gives no one room to grow or develop outside of Ashley and it just could have used a lot more of, hey, while Ashley's doing this, why don't we have these characters interact so we can develop them? Next up is presentation, which I think looks pretty good. It has a very distinct visual style with that very dreary red and brownish filter that covers the entire story. The artwork is done pretty well and it helps the scary story atmosphere the game is trying to show. It looks very unique when compared to other VNs. And I've got no issues with performance at all, so let's go right into battery life. On the original model, we get a range of 3 hours and 48 up to 4 hours and 16. 
The Nintendo Switch Lite gets a range of 3 hours and 56 up to 4 hours and 36. The Red Boxer V2 2019 model gets a range of 8 hours and 12 up to 8 hours and 46. And the OLED model gets a range of 8 hours and 28 up to 9 hours and 5. In conclusion, Silenced the House is an interesting little VN that feels kind of like a demo. It does some really cool things with the supernatural elements of its horror story and the character of Ashley herself, but the experience is dragged down by the lack of proper development done to the other characters, the very iffy translation, and the fact that the entire adventure can be completed and redone for all endings in less than an hour. There's potential here for a great horror story, and part of what is here is pretty good, but it definitely needed a lot more than what we got. Reviews to go. Rates Silenced the House for the Nintendo Switch a 6 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.